The nervous system is a collection of different tissues whose main function is to allow the cells in our body to communicate with one another in a quick and direct fashion over a very short distance. Now, the basic unit of a nervous system is a cell known as a neuron or a nerve cell. And a neuron is a specialized type of cell that can generate electric signals carry those electric signals and send or pass down those electric signals to other cells either via electrical or chemical means. Now a neuron is so specialized that it lost its ability to divide so a neuron cannot divide via mitosis and that implies that a neuron is always in the G0 phase of interphase. Now although the size and shape of neurons in the body can actually vary from one location to another, they all consist of several important features. So we have dendrites, the cell body also known as the soma we have the axon hillock, we have the axon as well as the axon terminal. So let's go through each one of these structures and discuss what the function of these structures are. So let's begin with our dendrites. So the dendrites are basically projections that come off of our cell body. And the purpose of these dendrites is to basically receive the electrical signal that comes from other cells and to send that electrical signals to other parts of our neuron. So these are the dendrite regions. Now this is known as the cell body or the soma. And the soma is the region of the cell that stores the nucleus and other organelles, for example, the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, our mitochondria, and so forth. Now, the region between this long extension known as the axon and the cell body is something called the axon hillock. So the axon hillock basically connects the axon to the cell body. And the axon hillock is really a specialized section of the cell body that is actually capable of generating an action potential. And the action potential is basically a voltage difference that allows an electric electric signal to be sent along the axon from our cell body. Now the axon is a long extension of our nerve cell that is specialized to actually carry or propagate that electrical signal that is generated in our axon hillock and it carries that electrical signals away from the soma from the cell body and to the end of the axon known as the axon terminal. Now, the axon terminal is also known as the synaptic terminal or the synaptic bouton. And the axon terminal consists of projections at the end of our axon that basically are specialized to transmit our electrical signals to other cells, either by electrical or chemical means. Now, if we actually zoom in on, e, uh, on any one of these projections, we get the following bulb-like structure. So at the end of each projection is a bulb-shaped structure that can basically release neurotransmitters. So we can release these chemicals known as neurotransmitters that can go on and bind to receptors on the postsynaptic cell as shown in the diagram and that can basically generate an electrical signal in the postsynaptic cell. Now the postsynaptic cell is basically the cell that is adjacent to our synapse to our axon terminal that receives that signal in the first place and the space the region between this bulb like structure and our postsynaptic cell is known as our synaptic cleft. Now, this entire region is also sometimes known as the synapse, and we're going to discuss the details of the synapse and how it actually works in a future lecture. So, we have these important structures, the dendrites, the cell body or the soma, the axon hillock, the axon, and the axon terminal, also known as our synapse or synaptic uh, terminal, and all of these neurons contain these types of structures. Now, let's actually briefly discuss the propagation of the electrical signal from the beginning to the end of our neuron. 
So the electrical signal is received or accepted by the dendrites of our cell by these projections shown in the following diagram. Now once our dendrites actually receive this electrical signal, they can send that electrical signal through the cytosol and the membrane of the cell body. Now the cell body is not actually itself capable of producing an action potential, but the cell body can pass down that electrical signal to the axon hillock. Now, once at the axon hillock, if the stimulation is high enough, if it reaches or exceeds the threshold value, then the axon will generate an action potential. Now, an action potential is basically a difference in the voltage between the outside and the inside of our cell. And this creates an electric current that is passed down along the axon. So this electric current is the electric signal. So eventually the electric signal reaches the synaptic bouton or our axon terminal. So the electric signal passes along the axon, eventually it reaches these bulb-like structures that we discussed earlier. Now, this will usually stimulate our bulb-like structure to release vesicles that carry neurotransmitters into this region. And then these neurotransmitters will bind to postsynaptic cell receptors, also known as effector cell receptors, on the cell membrane of this postsynaptic cell. Now, this in turn will usually cause changes to the membrane permeability of the postsynaptic cell and that in turn will generate some type of signal that will be passed down to the postsynaptic cell. And this is usually how the propagation of the electrical signal actually works along our nerve cell and we'll discuss this in much more detail in the next several lectures. Now, the final important aspect of a neuron that I want to mention is the energy source that it actually uses. So neurons depend almost entirely on glucose for energy generation. However, the neuron cannot actually store much of the glucose in the form of glycogen inside the cell. And the neuron cannot actually store much oxygen inside the cell either. So that basically implies that the neuron depends on glucose and oxygen that is found in the blood for a steady supply. Now, glucose is brought into the neuron via special type of protein molecules found in the membrane of our cell body, known as our facilitative transporter proteins. And unlike most other proteins that transport glucose found in other cells of the body, the proteins in the membrane of the nerve cells do not usually depend on insulin to transport our glucose glucose inside our cell. Now, that's not to say that insulin doesn't actually play an important role in the transportation of glucose into the inside of the cell. What this basically means is our glucose can still be brought into the cell in the absence of insulin. So basically, this is the introduction to our neuron. So a neuron is the basic functional unit of the nervous system, and a neuron consists of these important structures, these important regions that each serve their own primary function. So the main function of a neuron is to basically generate an electric signal, receive electric signals, and carry those electric signals to other way, to other cells, and this is how our cells communicate with one another in a rapid and direct fashion over very short distances.